good afternoon everyone we are uh, till finding out similism so how to find out the similism with the help of this bogers synoptic group the first step is elicit the evident cause and scope of sickness means that causes sufferer discomfort natural modifier of sickness the morality first our first duty is to find out the cause the cause of the uh, cause behind the sickness what is the cause behind the present state of the person how the sickness starts how the process of disease occurrence of disease it starts and how it get progress to the present state present condition of the patient then things that causes sufferer discomfort with which things the patient feel discomfortable or the with which things the patient feel comfortable find out the modifiers of sickness the modifiers of comfort and discomfort this is also our second duty to find out these modifiers that means to find out the modalities to find out aggravating and ameliorating factors which factors aggravate the and which factors they tend to relieve or temporarily relieve which factors the patient feel better so this is also very important to find out then modalities modalities are nothing but the natural modifiers of the sickness the modalities we very definitely ascertain most vitally important of such influences that is diet temperature proper care posture sleep alone motion sleep and eating touch pressure with diagnosis etc so with which things the patient feel or with which things the patient feel better with which thing the patient's condition is aggravated <laughs> these are nothing but the natural modifiers of the sickness they are nothing but the modalities of the patient's condition so this is the first step while working with bogar synoptic that to find out what is the cause behind the sickness then secondly to find out how the disease starts how it progresses and third is find out which factors modify the sickness of the patient which factors aggravate which factors ameliorate the condition of the patient then second step a consideration of mental state that is presence of irritability sadness or fear is the main factor so mental state as it represent the person which represent the personality of the patient how exactly the patient feels so the mental state to find out the exact mental state of the patient is very important and second state the state of working on the case consider these mental symptoms consider the patient's mental state by repertorization that is presence of irritability sadness of fear is the main factor so consider all these things is very important to find out the mental Uh, or to working on the case, considered 
these mental states or these mental symptoms are much important. Then the third state is patient's own description of sensation. The sensation which are only felt by the patient. And so how the patient describes its sensation. How much he uh, so the consideration of the sensation was described by the patient. This is the third step of repertoire. Always a certain that any of the following primary sensations are present. That is burning, cramping, cutting, bursting, swelling, swelling, and thirst. So any of these sensations are present or not, a certain these things much important what type of sensation what type of pain exactly the patient wants a pain because we can only consider these things with the help of description of patient how he explained his suffering and we have to find out which type of pain type of sensation the patient is having exactly. Then there may be many others, but the presence of any one of these often overshadows them. Means there are many type of sensations, many type of pain, but any one sensation which differ from one person to other person. So, there may be many other sensations, but the presence of any one of these often overshadows them. It may be any one symptom, any one sensation of the patient may give us the characteristic of that individual, may be curious symptom. So, or such a symptom may overshadow the other symptoms. Then the fourth state is the prior objective aspect or expression of the sickness. So to find out what is the entire objective aspect, what is the general how person is or what is the exact expression of the sickness to find out after taking the proper tests we can get the objective aspect or expressions of the sickness and lastly after considering positive factor after considering uh, progress of the disease modalities then all the sensations of the patient, sensations about his suffering, his mental state, after considering all these things, we can reach towards the what is exactly the sickness of the patient is and what is exactly what we have to treat in that patient. Or what is exactly the cause behind the situation, the present situation of the patient. So, the entire objective aspect or expression of the sickness we get in the fourth state. This should especially uh, include so the expression of the sickness should include the facial expressions. How the patient's 
operations are by directly doing complaints or not complaints. Sub-patients, they explain their symptoms in an exaggerated way. Some people, uh, though there is a lot of pain, but they cannot express that much intensity. So there are different people according to their tolerability of the pain or tolerability of the disease condition. They express the disease condition. And accordingly, some patients they are oversensitive, some patients they are less sensitive. So accordingly, the facial expressions may get changed in two persons. So, the facial expressions are also much important to show how the person is acting. Then, the manner means the behavior, conduct towards others, how the patient's patient is behaving, how the person is with the physician, with his relatives, with the other people who are in contact with the person. So, the behavior of the patient as well as the conduct towards others is also very much important. Then, nervous excitability, sensibility, Restlessness or torpor, state of the secretions and any abnormal coloring. So all these things they are also very much important in considering the patient as a person, person or patient as a whole. So these things. And the fifth state is parts affected. Which part is acting with, uh, or at which part the uh, patient was suffering? Which part is exactly affected? Is the organ get affected? Is the right side of the person is get affected? The left side is get affected? So the parts affected important to find out. Then correct describing is the art of careful treatment pathogenic clinical symptoms. Means matching the you have to match exactly the disease condition with the or the patients Symptoms with the medicinal symptom. So, the correct describing is the art of carefully treating pathogenic clinical symptoms. All symptoms stand on the same table. For certain effects, it must be more important than others. Yet, part and parcel of them. All the symptoms stand on the same paper and for certain effects must be more important than others yet be part and parcel of them. Means some symptoms are more important out of all symptoms and some symptoms are less important. We must learn to know our remedies just as our friends. It's as we know our friends, how we behave, how what's thinking after some particular situation, 
how his reaction after some particular event. We know exactly about our friend. So, as we know exactly about our friend, same way we should know exactly what is the characteristic of uh, or which remedy has which characteristic. So, as we know our friend exactly in the same way, we should know our remedies from our material which also exactly by their hair and personality and never changing completely different but always reflecting the same thing. In this way, these things are also much important to know that we should know exactly, we should know details about our Materia Medica, the remedies in our Materia Medica, and then we can able to match the symptoms of our patients uh, or the case with the symptom of the or with the medicine of the from the material It requires a special aptness in grasping the sensory points of symptom images. Bread, bread, and mastery of our key knowledge of our large Madhya America and most simply of any kind of reference. So, what we require, what which things are required to find out the exact minimum, it requires a special aptitude grasping the essential points of symptom images. Then, great drudgery mastering for calling the Karma Medica Medica. And most simple use of many books of reference. In this way, we should have proper knowledge about our Madhya Medica and skillful use of that knowledge in treating the patient. And reputation of source. General benefit derived from a single dose lacks the remedies to be repeated in the next higher frequency. Instead of looking upon the two symptoms as indicators for some other drug, for only the most differently rooted dyscrasia can, by varying its expression, resist the whole scale of the indicated. Means while repeating the dose. Up to the last slide, we need towards how to find out the similar with the help of focus reductivity and how or when we have to repeat the dose. First, we give the single dose, and if after giving a single dose to the patient, and if there is no progress which we found in the patient's condition. Then at that time, there is need to select the higher potency. Instead of repeating the same potency as well as if there are new symptoms, we cannot watch and wait till we get the new symptoms. And if there are new symptoms as indicators of some other drug, 
probably the most dependent red dyscrasia can primarily its expression raises the nodes in the indicated family. So from this slide remember only this thing that first how to describe the single dose and if the single dose lacks if it does not work properly if we cannot find progress in the condition of the patient and our medicine is correct then don't wait and don't wait till the new symptoms appear but go for the higher potency the repeat the medicine in the higher potency whenever the chosen remedy decides little or no reaction means our chosen remedy if it is faulty selection or presence of one of the fundamental miasm which call for either suranum sulfur medulinum or citrullinum is if when we prescribe any remedy and it give no reaction or our maybe our selection of the remedy may be wrong it may be faulty we cannot able to select the exact minimum and presence of one of the fundamental miasm which call for either suranum sulfur medulinum or citrullinum have to find out is there any fundamental miasm and accordingly we have to prescribe at that time anti miasmatic uh, remedy after prescribing the anti miasmatic remedy then we get some reaction or some changes in the present state of the patient then what is the scope of this bogers synoptic group as we know each group has its has its own scope and limitation so in the same way this group also have its own scope synopsis that is the whole sphere of action of drug is presented or not shown how much is the sphere of action of each drug it was presented very well modalities are given which is helpful for prescription especially in the report to section that is time and conditions of administration and amelioration in the report to section also the modalities are very well explained as well as in materia medica part also the modalities are explained very well then sphere of action of drug are given which will help physician study or classify the drugs in a group which in turn will help clinician in pick prescribing so many time we don't know the sphere of action of that drug and as we know the sphere of action of that drug then we can uh, able to select from the group of similars which medicine is indicated for that organ or part or system or that disease condition 
So we should know the sphere of action of every medicine so that it will helpful for us to find out the exact similimum in short time. So the sphere of action of drug and given which will help physician to study or classify the drugs in a group which in turn will help clinician to be prescribed. The repertory is intended to orient the surgeon. Means with the help of the repertory part of this group, we can easily search what we want to or we can easily find out the symptoms, the rubrics which are important in the case. And complementary and related medicines given at the end which will help physician to prescribe. So we discussed or we discussed already about these things that the complementary remedies, the related medicines, the sphere of action, duration of action, all is given in this repertory. So the complementary and related medicines which are given at the end, this will help physician with prescribing. Concept of Materia Medica and Repertory together helps for easy reference. Concept of Materia Medica there is a well arranged Materia Medica and Repertory part and by finding out the minimum, both these parts, that is the body part and materia medica part, they are very useful for the reference purpose. Then, gradation of symptoms in synopsis is very valuable. As we know, there are in the synopsis part also, in repertory part, in materia medica part, there is gradation. As in repertory part, there are two gradations that are used to indicate the rubric and subrubric, and three grades or three type of typography. They are used to write down the medicines. In the same way, in Materia Medica part, they use these same two gradations to write down the symptoms according to their importance. So this gradation of symptom in synopsis part, in Materia Medica part, is very much important and it is very much helpful, valuable to find out the important symptoms which are most important symptoms, which are less important symptoms, which are least important symptoms of that medicine. So this gradation of symptom in synopsis is very valuable. As less number of medicines are used in the body, it helps for quick bedside reference. So, there are less number of medicines in the repertory part. So, it is used for quick bedside reference purpose. Part B, especially supplementary reference table, 
is the highlight of this group. So the supplementary reference table is also very helpful to find out which rubric is on which page or what is the indicated reason for that rubric. As about that also we discussed in detail already. This is all about the scope of focusing of the rubric. Now there are some limitations of focusing of the rubric also. Out of these limitations, one is least of medicines is very less. There are low the materia medica is too large, but the number of medicines included are very less. It contains less number of Number of related medicines is less. Which are the related medicines? The number of related medicines is less. It cannot be used systematically. It cannot be used for systematic repertorization. So, for proper systematic repertorization, this synoptic rubric cannot be used, but it is used only for the with reference purpose. Rubrics in each chapter is very less with less number of medicine. As there are less number of medicines which are included in this group, this referred to part, and the rubrics in each chapter is also very less and indicated medicines are also very less in number. So this is all about the Bogers synoptic view. And in this book, lastly, was given that the corrected prescribing is the art of carefully fitting pathogenetic to clinical symptoms and as such at present requires a special aptness in grasping essential points of symptom images. Great gradually mastering working uh, knowledge of our large materia medica for the most skillful use of many groups of reference. It is the aim of this book to simplify and introduce method into this work so that the truly homeopathic physician, truly homeopathic curative remedy may be worked out with greater ease. For this purpose, a combination For this purpose, the combination of analytic and symptomatic methods has been thought best. So, in this way, this is the last page of this book. In this way, this is all about the Bogers synoptic view. So, first remember in this book, there are 
uh, this book was 